All right, guys, we got to determine the magnetic field for a solid cylindrical conductor of radius A, where the current I is uniformly distributed over the cross section. All right, we got to start with Ampere's law. All right, I enclosed equals the integral of h dot dl. So, so let's imagine this is our cylinder. And it doesn't say how long it is, so we're just going to assume infinity. So that Ampere's law will work. First things first for Ampere's law, we got to write, um, we got to do our Empyrean loop. And the Empyrean loop has to encircle the current flow and it's got to be in the direction of the magnetic field. So if this is right here, see this is the direction of phi hat right here. So our I enclosed is going to equal H. Our DL is the path of this right here. So it's going to be R D phi phi hat. Okay? And um, the bound here for phi is going to be 2 pi. Okay, and then we're going to solve for h. Alright, and this is our value for h. But wait, this is only true where r is greater than the radius of the cylinder. So this is part of our answer, but we also have to figure out what is h inside of the cylinder. Because right now our Empyrean loop is enclosing all of the current. But what if the Empyrean loop was maybe right here? How much would that be? All right, for that, we got to bring in another equation. This trusty guy right here. All right, so let's see what we got here. So for R is less than A, I is going to equal J dot ds. But wait, what is our ds? First of all, let's find the unit vector. Which direction is the current going in this cylinder? The direction of the current is going through the cylinder. So that's going to be our dx, our ds. So let's say this is the z direction going up. Okay, so that's part of our ds. And then from there, we just kind of fill in the blanks. It's we're not going to have a dz since we have a z unit vector, but we are going to have a dr and a d phi. So we're going to have dr, r dr, d phi. And what's our bound for r? Our bound for r is a, and our bound for phi, it's this whole thing, so it's going to be 2 pi. All right, carrying this through. Multiplied by that. All right, that's going to cross out. So then we're going to have I equals J sub Z A squared pi. And again, this sub Z came from the fact that we are, this is a vector that we're dotting with a unit vector. So we're saying it's only the portion of Z. That's where that sub Z came from. Okay, so now we have this. Um, remember, this I is only the I enclosed. Okay, so then we have this value right here. Let's solve for the J. Alright, so now this makes it where we have the value of J 
for this entire circle, this entire cylinder. So this way we can solve for the I enclosed and make it a function of how big our radius is. So we're going to plug it back into a new equation. We want R in terms of we want I in terms of R as a function. So this is our new J. Dotted with our same ds, which is r dr d phi z hat. Okay. All right, that's going to simplify. So our I enclosed as a function of R is I, R squared over A squared. So now we're going to plug that back into a new Ampere's Law equation. So i over i r squared a squared equals the integral of h dot dl which is r d phi phi hat bounds to pi this is going to give us h equals i r over 2 pi a squared in the phi hat direction. So this is the second half of our answer. This is the magnetic field where R is less than the radius of the cylinder. I hope this helped at least a little bit. Sorry it was so long-winded, but uh, there you go. All right, bye guys.